Hello, and welcome to What's the Big Idea? I'm your host, Michelle Tuck Ponder. Today's episode is brought to you by Destination Imagination, commonly referred to as DI, the leading creative problem-solving experience for children. Through DI's innovative project-based educational experiences, participants gain the skills that will set them up for success in careers like the one we're gonna hear about today. Learn more about DI at destinationimagination.org. On today's episode, we are pleased to welcome Grace Chu. Grace is a senior manager at Platoon, an artist services and music distribution company owned by Apple, where she leads a team focused on artist strategy. After earning her BFA from the University of Virginia, Grace launched headfirst into a creative career in the music and tech industry. During her 15 years at Apple, she has worked on key campaigns and launches, including Apple Music Festival, iTunes Radio, Apple Music Up Next, and Apple TV Plus. Prior to Apple, she previously worked at Sony and Obey Giant. Joining us today from Los Angeles, California, please welcome Grace Shu. Hi, Grace. Hi, Michelle. So great to be here. It's great that you are here. This is really exciting and fascinating for me because this is a an area that I don't know very much about at all. I, I think that with most people, you turn on Spotify or you turn on your XM radio, whatever the case may be, and the artist is just there and we're not thinking about what's the road to get there. So this is really exciting, but I'd love to hear more about you and your job. And what is it exactly that you do? Yeah, so currently right now, I mean, I, for all intents and purposes, uh, work as a creative director. Um, I oversee a team of, of creative directors and creative producers, and we work on artist campaigns uh, from basically to helping them develop, uh, building out their logo, their brand identity, building up their creative vision for what they want for their album or their single releases. Um, and it's really a partnership and a collaboration between my team and also the artist teams as well, because it's, it takes a village, <laughs> that's for sure, <laughs> to launch any kind of campaign, whether it's um, in the music industry or in uh, film and TV. So Grace, how do you figure out what artists have potential? What artists that you would invest the time and energy in helping them to build that brand? You know, it's really interesting because um, at Platoon, we are very different uh, from a lot of other record labels in the sense that um, we are artists first. Um, and so we strongly believe that um, what normally what, uh, what a record label would do is they would listen to the track uh, or listen to demos and they would say, okay, this song fits into pop or this song fits into hip hop. And mm -hmm. they'll look at the metrics of like, you know, what the kids are listening to these days mm -hmm. and then basically shape a campaign from there. A lot of it is dictated by um, what's in the market, what's, um, you know, the look of the artist and you know, for us, we kind of go the opposite direction in the sense that it is all based on the music, whether or not it's good or not, um, but we kind of buck the trends a little bit. And we really take heart in listening to who the artist is, what they want. Um, and we don't try to force them into or pigeonhole them into a genre or a look or a trend um, that they may or may not even feel comfortable doing. Wow. So you've been doing this for a while, and I imagine that you've seen a lot of changes in, in the industry, but I'm curious to find out, was there a particular moment or mentor or experience that inspired you to go into this career? You know, it's interesting. When I was at UVA, I was in fine art and graphic design, they didn't even have a graphic design program. Um, so a lot of the skills that I had to learn um, were self-taught uh, in a lot of ways. And I think there's a lot of anxiety, honestly, these days, um, especially for college students who are worried, you know, if that their passion for art may not translate into, you know, into a viable career. Um, and in a really interesting sense, I did have one 
uh, teacher, one professor at UVA, she was actually an architecture dean um, who kind of took me under her wing. And she very much instilled in me the fact that what you study in college um, doesn't actually define what you do in your career. You can make it whatever, whatever you want it to be. I mean, I thought my career would be either working in academics, teaching um, mm -hmm. fine art, art history, or, you know, maybe working at a gallery as a docent. I had no idea that all the years spent, you know, working in Photoshop would actually lead to a, a viable career choice. That's really interesting because in DI, we, we try to, we integrate art into STEM. So as you know, we call it STEAM. Mm -hmm. um, so there are a lot of people out there who are artists and creatives, but who also need to have their finger in, in the other elements in some way, shape or form. And, and the other thing that we focus on is communications, collaboration, critical thinking and creativity. And I've got to believe that you use all of those, all of those skills every single day. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, and I would definitely say, and it's funny because when I was in high school, um, I actually, you know, did an after school program that was very similar to uh, Destination Imagination. It was all about creative thinking, all about teamwork. And, you know, I tell this to my parents all the time that, you know, all those years going to like AP calculus has actually <laughs> amounted to not that much for me. But all the skills that I learned from doing that after school program, um, I still use to this day. Um, there are great problem problem solving, um, way, creative thinking ways that are mm -hmm. extremely useful uh, for my job. And even now, I mean, I think one of the biggest things that I feel like kids could learn is how to work well with others, how to collaborate, how to be able to listen to their teammates, um, and also how to uh, accept criticism and feedback, mm -hmm. constructive feedback, <laughs> because that will go very, 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 very far, no matter what field that you're in and what industry, because it's so important. So do you have a situation in your career that felt the most like a challenge, like your high school program that that felt like, this is instant challenge or this is, you know, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally every day. Um, because I remember during um, the, uh, I, one of the things that I actually, that really, really sticks out to me from that high school experience was um, there was a challenge about, you know, you had 40 or 30 seconds for, um, to think on, on your feet, to come up with a bunch of different answers based on one solution. And, um, it was, I think it was supposed to be like about spontaneous thinking. And I still use that exercise to this day, every day, when I have to meet with an artist team and we have to develop an entire campaign uh, based on the singles they want to release and also what they want their, what their concert to look like, what the mm -hmm. stage um, should be. And what's really interesting is that because the music industry changes and it's quite competitive as well, um, you know, I may have an artist that we've mapped out the entire campaign from start to finish, every single visual, every single music video. And then a, a similar artist uh, will actually release something that's pretty much the same. And so you have to switch gears on the fly and be like, okay, we need to come up with like 10 more ideas to pitch back. Um, and that's kind of how you have to stay ahead uh, in a lot of ways. And you know, great things come from those, those brainstorming sessions. That that it, you're you're absolutely right, you know, and it, and I'm excited about um, creatives and careers. So my my husband, who had a 30 year career as an attorney, now has a career as an artist, which is wow. really like ah, because <laughs> he, <laughs> that was my sound effect for going around a corner. But <laughs> it, because he didn't believe when he was studying art in high school that that was a viable career. And, and I guess my question for you is, if, if there's a student out there listening or a parent who's like, what are they gonna, how are they gonna make a living in art? What kind of advice would you give them? Because the world has changed so much. There's a lot of different ways to, to do that. Yes, and I think that that's a great, honestly, that's a great question. I mean, when I graduated from high school, I thought that I was gonna be a doctor. My parents were very, very, very insistent on me being pre-med um, and, it was, I think that, I think it was my second year at UVA when I realized that 
Um, I would be a terrible doctor in the sense that I faint at the sight of blood. So there's that <laughs> crossed off the list. And also I couldn't even like, I couldn't pay attention in, you know, organic chemistry and all of like, cause I just didn't have an interest in it. And when I told my parents, you know, I wanted to uh, go into a completely different field that was art and media, um, you know, they were not happy about it <laughs> um, because of that anxiety of like, how are you going to support yourself? And I would definitely say that what it takes to make it into this field is you have to be confident in your skills, um, but you also have to realize it's a very humbling experience too, that you have to realize there's a lot of people that want to get into this field. Um, So it really kind of falls on uh, you as a student to realize that you have to hustle (laughs) and Mm -hmm. say yes to a lot of things, especially in your career that, that you may or may not be into because you don't know what that would lead next. You don't know if that's going to be your next job um, or your next project. And you're only as good as your last one. So I would definitely say, if you want to get into the uh, arts field, definitely have a point of view, definitely have a lot of confidence in your skills. And sometimes it'll works out great, but there's definitely going to be ups and downs, but keep to the course. (laughs) That's great advice. That's great advice. And we are going to hear more from Grace Shu in just a moment. We'll be right back. Destination Imagination is busy behind the scenes, planning an exciting new season of creativity, collaboration, STEAM learning, and a lot of fun for your kids. Your favorite young people can choose from one of seven brand new in-person challenges now when you start a team. If you're ready to awaken creativity and ignite a love of learning in your child, join us today. To get started, visit us at destinationimagination.org forward slash the big idea. Welcome back to What's the Big Idea? I'm Michelle Tuck Ponder, and I'm here talking to Grace Shu, who um, actually is went in the leadership of a company called Platoon. Why is it called Platoon? You know, it's interesting. Um, the I think when it first started, the concept of it um, uh, was started by this man named Denzel Fiegelson. He's uh, uh, very well known within in the music industry, and he wanted it to be a platform for fearless creatives. That was his main goal, and his whole ethos is the fact that when we all come together, we all become we basically become a a unit, a platoon, essentially. So uh, it's interesting, we just went through um, an icon uh, design um, because we never had an icon, we just had the word mark. And when we were going through that exercise, which was (laughs) three years in the making, I think, (laughs) um, and we finally, uh, we worked with a great uh, design agency in New York called Pentagram. Um, They've done quite a bit of logo and brand work for a lot of huge uh, companies. And the fact that they were willing to take this one on was um, a big, was actually really heartwarming for me. It was kind of a bucket list item for me. (laughs) But uh, going through that process, um, we realized that we didn't want like a traditional like music type logo. We wanted something that really kind of touched people or connected with people. Um, So that's why we decided to go with two zebras that are resting against each other. Um, Denzel's actually from South Africa originally, and we have a huge Africa music roster. Um, So that was one connection, but on a deeper level, um, it's because zebras actually only, they're in a, they're very herd based and they sleep standing up. So they actually rest their necks on each other. Um, And we just kind of love that idea of community. And even though each zebra is um, unique in its stripes, um, no two zebras are the same, uh, it allows for people to have that their own identity, but still be part of a a community. That is very cool. That is very cool. I've had had the privilege of spending some time in Africa and traveling there. And so I always find things that are connected to the land and connected to, to nature and understanding the origin to be to be very cool. So I, I find the whole idea of platoon ex- really exciting and interesting. And I guess my question is, how did you manage the linkage between fine arts and technology? Because a lot of times people think, you know, they're siloed. I'm an artist. I don't know anything about technology. But from what you're telling me, there's a lot of STEM stuff that happens 
in terms of what you're doing. So how do you integrate that? Yes, actually, especially now the world has changed so much, even in the past year. Um, one of the biggest challenges, for example, that we had was uh, the fact that everyone, the world was in lockdown. So our artists were, uh, they couldn't tour and they had music that they were just pumping out because they had nothing else to do. So we had to figure out a way to somehow get the music out um, that felt new, felt different. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of, there were a lot of like concerts that were happening on like Triller and Twitch and then TikTok was blowing up. And so just kind of keeping an eye on social media was one thing, but one area that we felt needed to be explored was augmented reality, because you could actually take an album and um, you could put spatial audio against it. Um, and you can actually build out an augmented world, essentially, that your artists, that our artists wanted to create. So to be able to give that to their fans, essentially their own private, almost private concert mm -hmm. that they could, you know, experience in their home through their device um, with spatial audio was a huge uh, project for us. And we absolutely loved it because it was something that was completely new. And hearing the feedback from the fans was, uh, was exciting because it's something that like, if COVID hadn't happened, probably wouldn't, we probably wouldn't have pushed it that far. <laughs> You're, you're absolutely right. So you're, you're working on a lot of amazing things, but what's making you jump out of bed in the morning? Oh, that's a great question. I think that it is the, it's the idea of being able to come up with an idea and work with a team that I have full trust in, and we're able to make something really, really great that mm -hmm. has the potential to change people's lives. And I think, honestly, that was one of the biggest draws of, uh, you know, going to coming, going to Apple 15 years ago um, mm -hmm. was being part of that. How do you affect change in a way that um, is really exciting? And then even now in music, it's been really, really just fascinating to see how, mm -hmm. you know, the Internet has pretty much pulled down a lot of walls. Um, you know, I have an artist uh, from Nigeria named Adekun Legol that I'm working on right now, his campaign. And it used to be that getting artists who are in a different part of the world to come to the U.S. and U.K. to try and break it into those markets was really, really difficult. But mm -hmm. uh, because I think the, it's people are a little bit more open to listening to new music, uh, find, trying to find new beats, trying to find something, um, a new aesthetic that they're open and they have more access to a lot of these uh, a lot of these artists. So adekunle has got uh, his an album coming out uh, later this summer, and it's been incredible working on his campaign because even though we're all remote, <laughs> it's uh, we're learning a lot about uh, you know his culture and how to reconcile that or not or how to import that into um, the U.S. and U.K. audiences. So, so would you say, so unlike what you, what you alluded to earlier in the conversation where you talked to, talked about somebody's pop, somebody's hip hop, somebody's jazz, somebody, like you have to fit into that box. Now I feel like what you're saying is what we're getting is the artist yes. and, and they may either create a new box or may, they may be the only person who ever comes in with that style. Is that, is that, do you think that's where the industry is heading? I hope so. To be honest, I really hope so. I mean, I think that those pillars of pop and hip hop and R&B, those are all going to be still there, but there are little niches and subcategories that, that are really exciting. And that's where a lot of, um, I feel like a lot of the artists now, they're willing to experiment. They're willing to, you know, it used to be like a pop star wouldn't record um uh, you know, an album in Spanish that was very, very rare, but mm -hmm. now it's actually becoming more, more common. And just the fact that, that that exists is really exciting. So how difficult is it to be global? Because something that happens at, at, at our company is that we always have to think about like, oh yeah, we're global. Like we need to do this because we're global. Is that something that's integrated into what it is that you're doing these days? Yes, 100%. And a big part of it is because our platoon headquarters are in London, um, but the, we have a huge Africa roster. 
and then we're building out, you know, more and more uh, platoon uh, employees in uh, in the U.S. And um, you know, it, I think the biggest issue is that it leads to uh, it leads to uh, some interesting work hours, <laughs> um, and also, um, under, you know, it also has. A, I have now have a deep understanding for um, time zones. <laughs> 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 but you know on top of all of that I think it's just the music in and of itself reminds us every day that we are a global uh we're a global team and mm -hmm. and that's the that's truly exciting that that is because it's wonderful when you travel around the world and you hear something you go how come I never heard that before like that's like the bomb like why am I not <laughs> Why is this not in my playlist? Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. So so we're gonna move on um, from this talk to a section we like to call rapid fire. And it's basically yes or no questions. Um, and you don't have to give them a lot of thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just whatever comes out of the top of your head. Sure. All right, question one. Yes or no, will robots ultimately come for your job? No. I agree. Is social media the best or the worst? Ooh, can it be both? It can be both. <laughs> then I would say both. <laughs> All right, now this is the key question. Yes or no, does pineapple belong on pizza? Yes. I'm just so shocked. <laughs> 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 I, you know, everybody says yes, and you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't. Maybe it's because I'm from New Jersey. I don't know, but, but I'll accept it. I said, oh, she's from California. She's gonna say yes anyway, because it's fresh and, you know, <laughs> foods and all that. <laughs> I would actually put like a, a disclaimer. It depends on like, it's not the canned pineapple. It's got to be like a fresh pineapple. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you get a little bit more credit for that. <laughs> Is there anything that you would like for us to know better about you or about what you do at Platoon before we wrap up? Um, I would definitely say that um, the biggest thing that I, that I use at Platoon from my, from my days, uh, in high school is the fact that it's never good to work in a silo. It's always important and you'll actually go much farther in your, in your success um, when you actually work together. Um, and it's always try to work with people who are smarter than you. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And one last question, what big ideas excite you now? <laughs> Actually, I think I'm excited about um, the big idea that this next generation is going to come come up with, because I feel like with everything that has gone on in the past year, past two years, the changes that have been slow, uh, but they are coming and there are changings at a very snail pace. I think by the time that these students who are in middle school, high school, by the time they are my age, um, I think that they're going to do great things. So I'm excited to see what those big ideas are. I, I agree with you 100%. Um, I'm sad that they had to see it and learn it the way they did, but I'm glad now that they know it. Yeah. So that's great. It's, it's been great talking to you. We would like to acknowledge that this episode of What's the Big Idea was recorded on land originally inhabited and cultivated by the Lenape and Tongva nations. We are grateful for this land and for the people who have stewarded it for generations. This episode was produced by Adam Law with additional material provided by Renee Rainville and Johnny Wells and music by Kevin McLeod. Special thanks to our guest, Grace Shu, for joining us today. You can learn more about Grace on LinkedIn, and you can learn more about how DI is preparing more students to be the innovative and creative leaders of tomorrow by visiting destinationimagination.org slash the big idea. Thanks for joining us and looking forward to hearing about your big ideas. The U.S. Department of Labor estimates that 65% of today's students will be employed in jobs that have yet to be invented. 
We have no way of knowing what those jobs will entail, but we do know that the skills that will prepare them for success are the skills that they develop through destination imagination. Hi, I'm Johnny Wells, Director of Education for Destination Imagination. Before joining the staff, I was a team manager for over 40 teams. Being a team manager is still one of the most rewarding experiences for me as I watched hundreds of students thrive and grow. Destination Imagination, or DI, is an international project-based competition that reinforces the four C's, creativity, communication, collaboration, and critical thinking. You probably heard about those skills in today's episode, and DI is the place where kids like yours develop those skills for themselves. Students work together in small teams to create solutions to an open-ended challenge. DI's team challenges fall into one of seven categories, scientific, technical, engineering, fine arts, improvisation, service learning, or, for the younger children, early learning. A DI team selects one of these seven challenges and prepares a solution to present at a local tournament. Throughout the experience, students create projects, solve problems, build relationships, learn new concepts, and have a great time in the process. We're building the workforce of the future. Today's DI participants are tomorrow's innovators, problem solvers, and leaders. If that sounds like a good fit for you and the young people in your life, We'd love to have you join us. To get started today, visit destinationimagination.org slash learn more.